So if I didn't already hate myself enough by doing the 1 HP challenge... I hate you! All of you! I thought of a new one, and that was to beat the game with the starter pistol. Now, I do want to go over a couple rules I created for myself, and those rules are I'm not allowed to damage or kill anyone outside of using the starter pistol. So I'm not allowed to assassinate, I'm not allowed to use other weapons, and this makes my gameplay a little interesting. I'm not allowed to upgrade this gun in any capacity, because when you get handed a gun, it gets handed at the level that you are currently at, and you can level up a gun, so a common pistol can be upgraded to a legendary tier damage numbers. So without being able to upgrade it, it's going to do basically no damage. And finally, my last rule for myself is if I'm in a mission that forcibly takes away my gun, such as the heist, I have to complete that mission with the first gun that I find. Now, in order to start this challenge off, I of course put it on the hardest difficulty of the game and decided to go for the Nomad intro. After fixing my car and dealing with a dick of a police officer, you didn't answer my question now, did you? I head up to the radio tower to find out who my contact is and end up meeting with Jackie. Oh, I was worried I'd have to turn to farming. Me and Jackie go through a checkpoint, end up slipping a guy some cash, and then get double crossed and have to make our way through a quick driving section. Find out we're transporting an iguana, and then we start the game. After finishing up the intro, I get introduced to the gun that'll be my friend for the rest of this run. Now again, making our way into the apartment, I'm not allowed to kill people with assassinations or anything like that, so I have to go in guns blazing. This right here is what makes this challenge painfully difficult. Rip up the street! We save Sandra Dorset and make our way home. And end up getting chased by a group of scavs, where I do make pretty easy work of them considering I am still at the beginning of the game with the starter pistol. It's not that bad. After waking up the next morning, I head over to Vix, I get my zoomy eyes, and meet up with Dex to talk about the mission, The Heist. After finally getting released into the open world, I decide to take a look at the starter pistol and look at its stats. And seeing that I can do a whopping 21 damage per shot, I decide to take advantage of a specific line of text. Bullets can ricochet off surfaces. Now with the over 300 hours I have in this game, I know a lot of pieces of equipment and perks and things like that that help with ricochet damage. So I decided to give this a shot. Knowing that I'm gonna need some pretty decent levels under my belt for this, I decide to start grinding by doing some assault and progress missions. And here's where I find how absolutely insanely difficult this challenge is going to be. I died countless times trying to just clear areas full of three to four people. It is insanely difficult. I grinded for over an hour and a half and only gained one level. Luckily, I made enough money that I was able to go get the legendary ballistic coprocessor, which you guessed it, increases ricochets by additional one and ricochet damage by 50%. Feeling a lot more set up, I decide to go take on all foods. I meet up with Meredith, get the data chip from her, meet up with Jackie, and we head on in to meet up with Royce. Knowing that Royce is going to be a pain if I fight him in his mech suit, I decide to take him out in the beginning using my strength. Jackie and I make quick work of his goons. I grab the flathead and we begin to make our way through all foods. Now again, because I can't use stealth, I have to go in guns blazing, and so in this case, I take heavy advantage of the fact that Jackie is with me and I let him go wild. Now with it taking almost a full clip to kill every single person in this room, I begin to run into my main issue I'll deal with in this run, which is ammo. I've run out of ammo, decide to let Jackie take care of them, and find out Jackie actually has a health bar, and he goes down. With Jackie down, I decide to take a chance and see if any bodies had pistol ammo, and wouldn't you know it, I get lucky and find some ammo on a body, and I'm able to kill the last dude, and Jackie gets back up. We fairly simply make it through the rest of all foods, and I make my way to meet up with Evelyn. Knowing that the heist is gonna take away my gun, I decide I'd rather get it out of the way sooner rather than later. After meeting up with Evelyn, she shows me her spicy moments with Yorinobu. I find out where they're keeping Keanu Reeves. With all the information I need, I make my way to the afterlife where we start the mission, the heist. 
Jackie and I pull up to Compeki Plaza. I'm forced to put away my gun and start the mission. We get up to our suite, hack a dude with the flathead, and make our way to Yorinobu's penthouse. And I find the gun that'll be my friend through the rest of this mission. We grab Keanu Reeves, and who'd have guessed it, Yorinobu's on his way, so we hide in a pillar TV thing? I don't know. Jackie and I watch as Yorinobu and his father have a tap dancing competition. Yorinobu gets pissed because his dad's better than him and strangles him to death. Oh shit! After jumping off the building trying to get away, we get into the combat section. After tasting the power of a different gun, I overexert myself and end up dying. I read the gun's special ability and realize it actually helps with ricochet. I decide to take full advantage of this and find it actually does more damage. With this newfound knowledge, I'm easily able to make my way through this entire area and running into, once again, my biggest issue, which is ammo. With my lack of ammo, I try to be as accurate as possible, landing as many headshots as possible, and also allow Jackie to do a lot of work. After making it to the ground floor and completely running out of ammo, I have to let Jackie take down the last dude. A giant mech drops down and I realize I'm screwed. So I run for the elevator. We hop into Delamain and start this next driving section. And with how much this last section plagued me in my last challenge run, I take these down with pleasure. Beating all the drones, Jackie decides to hand me Keanu Reeves and breathes his last breath. Rest in peace, Jackie. I head up to meet up with Dex, where he tells me I messed up and puts a bullet in my head. And I start the Keanu Reeves flashback. Hop into a helicopter with Rogue, watch Colossus from X-Men take a bullet, and start to take on all the Arasaka goons. Now this mission with Johnny Silverhand's pistol and health pool is a cakewalk. I make pretty quick work of all of it and complete the mission, getting caught by Adam Smasher. Waking up in my own body, I see Dex get what he deserves, Takamura helps me out, we get back to Vix, blah blah blah, Gana Reeves is in my head, and we get back to the open world. Waking up, I decide to go meet up with Takemura and see a rare concrete swimming car. Fantastic. Quickly get through the conversation with Takimura and Johnny Silverhand, and this is where I begin to start putting in some serious levels for a bit. I get a text from Wilson telling me he has all the 1.5 new stuff, and this is what I've been waiting for. You see, the special thing that Wilson sells is muzzles, and luckily, even though it's a common pistol, I can put higher tier muzzles on this gun, so I go and get a nice new muzzle that, you guessed it, increases ricochet damage. I didn't realize how many different muzzles there were, so I don't pick up the best there is, but it's still better than nothing, with an increase of 60% damage. I hop back into more assault and progresses and take heavy advantage of the fact that this muzzle also lets me bend bullets around corners really well, but this is still insanely difficult and I can't take on usually more than like five people. It's really hard. To put it in perspective for you, let me show you this fight, how many bullets I go through. I start off with 408 in my stash and finally finish with 276. I spent 132 bullets to take out just a couple guys. Also, I don't know why it took me this long, but I found out I can just craft ammo if I have the resources. So technically I have the ability to have limitless ammo, but the problem is you can't craft in combat. So you would think because I can craft ammo that I could have as much ammo as I want then. The issue is this game has, for some dumb reason, a cap on the amount of ammo that you can carry at one time. And for pistols, that is a max of 500 bullets. This ends up being one of the main issues in this run. I head up to Wilson's store once more and find the version of muzzle that I will use the rest of this run, the RC7 Baba Ro... Anyways, it increases ricochet damage by 125%, and this is only the uncommon tier. These go all the way up to epic tier, so it's spicy. With all of these ricochet bonuses, my gun is now doing between 30 to close to 100 damage per shot, which is kind of crazy. If I land a crit too, sometimes I get up to 200. 
considering this gun's base damage says that it's only going to go up to 21 damage, it's, it's putting in work now, and it feels good. Mind you, it's still a lot of ammo and a lot of bullets I have to shoot to kill people, but it's a lot more manageable now. Now, while trying to gain some levels, I do end up running around looking for things like the Street Smart Crafting Spec and Armadillo, and end up finding some more concrete swimming cars. Majestic. My curiosity gets the better of me, and I have to get in it. Being dissatisfied with what happened when I got in the car, I continue with my prospects and find rare mating boxes. Beautiful. With my curiosity satisfied, I get back on track and get distracted by people without feet and someone sitting through a concrete wall. And run into someone who's encased in concrete like Han Solo, but he doesn't look too mad about it. After gaining a couple levels and making a decent chunk of change, I decided to just go meet up with Takemura, get through the talking segments with him, then head over to meet up with Rogue and pay her for the information on Anders Hellman with the money I made. She connects me with Pan Am, I steal a random car, and go meet up with her. We ambush some dudes to get her car back and make pretty quick work of all of them, especially with Pan Am sniping them from a distance. Pan Am's on a revenge trip, so we decide to go take on this dude Nash in his hideout and have a pretty extended combat segment where I kind of sit back a lot and let Pan Am do a lot of work. We finish up our mission and begin to make plans to capture Hellman. We create an EMP by overloading a power network. We set off the EMP to take down the AV, and Pan Am decides to throw in a rocket for extra measure, because that wouldn't kill Anders. That's how you do it. Once again, I watch the AV breakdance on its way down, and we make our way to the crash site. I take out all the robots, save Mitch, and we hop on our bikes to go get Anders. Is Pan Am okay? We make it to where Anders is hiding out, and because I know this mission auto-kills everything if you make it to Anders, I just quickly sneak my way into the building, avoiding all the dudes, and get to where Anders is, and everything just dies. I grab Anders Hellman, say goodbye to Pan Am, and begin to interrogate him. With one of the three checkboxes done before the end of the game, I decide to do some more side missions to gain some more money, because I want some specific cyberware and things like that. I hit level 17. And I'm able to get the perk, play with the angles, getting it to a max level of 3, getting 50% additional damage on Ricochet, and unlock Epic Crafting. And begin making a lot of money really quick with Smart Pistols. I go and get a lot of cyberware such as Trajectory Analysis, uh, Double Jump, one of my all-time favorites, and Subdurable Armor. I go meet up with Takemura where we have to go into an Arasaka warehouse and plant some malware on one of the Arasaka floats. Now again, I was on purpose on getting double jump and you're easily able to just run through this building double jumping and getting through it very quickly. I don't get spotted and jump out. Honestly, one of the easiest missions. With finishing that mission, and I know the next section with Takemura is gonna be a pretty heavy combat section, I decide to go finish up the things with Judy and Evelyn first. I make my way up to clouds where they force me to put my gun away, so I decide to just beeline straight to Woodman and make him like me so that way I can just leave without dealing with combat. He tells me Evelyn was sent to Fingers. I call up Judy and we head there. Fingers tells us she was picked up by some dudes, so we do some detective stuff and find out where she is. I quickly decide to sneak my way into the lower levels and then start going in guns blazing, luckily with the help of Judy. We're pretty easily able to make our way through this area, killing off most of the dudes and saving Thank Evelyn. God. With knowing the next couple missions are going to have boss characters with big health bars in the missions, I decide to just go level up a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot. I do a stream where I went from level 19 all the way up to 42. On stream, I did end up finding the Armadillo crafting spec. And with getting my crafting up to level 18, I was able to make legendary tier armadillos, which was going to allow me to survive so much better. I do last bits of grinding to hit the max level 50. I'll quickly go through all my perk trees if you want to pause and look and see what perks I ended up using for this. 
I end up running around the city and grabbing every piece of cyberware that I think will be useful for this character. I also run to Wilson's and finally buy the epic tier muzzle, which increases ricochet damage by 175%. It's insane. I also pick up a Militech Falcon, whatever it's called, Mark V, to slow down time and increase damage while in that state to hopefully allow me to take down dudes a little bit better. Okay, so let's talk damage numbers real quick. This gun's base damage at a maximum says it can only do 20 damage. However, with all the perks in the pistol skill tree and all the ricochet bonus, whenever I shoot a ricochet shot, I get 150 damage per body shot. That's insane. With criticals, I get above 500. I don't think I understood how broken ricochet was until I was doing this challenge. Finally, I decided it's time to pick up where I left off, and I go meet up with Takemura to start Play It Safe. Now this mission is meant to be a stealth one where you take out three snipers, but because I'm not allowed to stealth takedown, I have to go guns blazing, making this mission quite difficult. After taking down all three snipers, I get to the part of the mission I've been fearing from the start. I make sure I have the maximum 500 bullets and make my way into the fight with Oda. Been on a while. Time for a break. Now, because Oda is really annoying and slippery, unless he's attacking me, I can't seem to land shots. So I decide to let him attack me a lot because my armor's high, I have a lot of resistances, so I just kind of stand there really close to him, popping shots at him, using a bounce back to just continually refresh my health. Now, I fight Oda for over five minutes, spending over half the ammo in my stockpile and only take off 25% of his health. Realizing I'm not going to be able to put out enough damage to actually take Oda down, I start to brainstorm while continuing to shoot him. And while I'm sitting there shooting at him, he triggers my near-death electrical discharge, which is a cyberware that I had purchased, taking off almost 10% of his health. I realize at this moment, this is my way to take him down. Now, I realized after the fact that this is kind of smudging my rules, but I'm not kidding when I say I don't think it's possible with the limitation on how much ammo you can have. If I could have unlimited ammo, he'd be a cinch. I just would run around and shoot him a ton and it would be one of the longest fights ever. But because of the ammo limitation, I did have to smudge my rule a bit and use this ability to slowly chip down his health. Waiting for all the cooldowns of my cyberware and pop shots at him here and there, making sure he's not healing ever. And wouldn't you know it, my luck and it being cyberpunk, my game crashes and I have to start the fight all the way from the beginning. This time with my newfound big brain knowledge, I slowly chip away at Oda's life total and finally take him down. Come on, a little more damage. No, 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 no. Stop. Okay, he's gonna heal, he's gonna heal. Get up, V, V. Oh my gosh, please get up. Where'd he go, where'd he go, where'd he go? One more hit, come on. There you go. Okay, where are you going, where are you going? Stop. Nice, that electrical damage was good. It's good. Okay, okay, we should be good. This should be it. Come on, just die, Oda, please. Bro, you have 0% health. How are you alive? Oh my gosh, finally. What is your status? With Oda down, Takemura kidnaps Hanako, and I dip out of there to meet him. I meet up with Hanako, tell her that her brother killed her father over a tap dancing competition, and Arasaka shows up, blowing up the whole place. Takemura once again stands like a total chad, and I take heavy advantage of the fact that I have the legendary cloak, and just run out of there. With Anders found and having talked to Hanako, the last thing I need is to talk with Alt Cunningham. 
In order to meet up with Alt Cunningham, I have to first do a mission given to me by this guy, Placide. In this mission, I have to fight through a lot of these gang members called the Animals and eventually make my way into a boss room. However, since I'm level 50 with the Legendary Invisibility Cloak, I just turn it on and start sprinting through the building. I make my way to the truck, hack into the truck, and finally go meet up with the boss. Now, this is an interesting boss fight because there is a thing that's on her back that unless it's destroyed, she continually heals herself. And in order to destroy it, you either have to get her below 75% health, I think it is, or you do a stealth takedown at the beginning of the fight. Since I'm not allowed to damage her by stealth, I'm not allowed to do that, so I just use my pistol, trying to damage her enough. The bad part is, my total DPS, I can't outpace her health regen. I try for a long time to see if I can do this without the cyberware, but it turns out, once again, that I have to rely on this static discharge to do the damage to her. So I reload the fight, starting from the beginning once again with all my ammo, and just allow her to wail on me and let the static discharge go off. For some reason, this thing sometimes doesn't do a lot of damage, and other times it does, and it takes me a couple tries to finally get it to trigger and stop her health regen. From here, it's not too bad. I just use my ricochet bonus damage and unload into her, spending close to 200 bullets. With Matilda down, I go encounter the Netwatch agent. Placid tries to kill me, thinking I made a deal with him. I tell Placid he's a jerk, and finally get to meet with Brigitte. She takes me into an underground train station, where we get to live one of Johnny's memories once again. Since this doesn't really apply to this challenge run, I am just going to quickly skip through it and give you the bullet points. Johnny liked a girl named Alt. Alt gets kidnapped. Johnny tries to save her. Alt's dead. Jumping into a digitized world, we have a conversation with this girl, Alt, who had transferred her consciousness into the internet in some weird way. I don't really understand. It's kind of cool. She says she'll help us if we can get to Mikoshi, which is in Arasaka, which means we need to go meet up with Hanako once again. After almost dying, Keanu Reeves saves me and takes me to a sketchy apartment, and we have a nice heart-to-heart. -heart. How lovely. I call up Hanako, letting her know we have everything in order, and go meet up with her. Yes. Assembled all we talked about. Good. No. We have a quick conversation, I begin to pass out, and Johnny takes me back to Vix. With being told we maybe have hours to live, we go up on a rooftop to make a decision. Now at this point, just like in the last run, I technically can beat the game right now. There is a way out of the game where you make certain decisions with conversations with Keanu Reeves and you can just kill yourself right here and end the game. However, that doesn't feel fitting, so once again, I'm going to call up Hanako and start the end game mission. Anders Hellman picks me up. We drive to the Arasaka estate where I have to rescue Hanako. This estate is full of a lot of high level enemies and is actually a very big challenge to clear everyone out. Luckily, with all of the new armor and armadillos and everything like that, I can stand and take most of it. The biggest issue comes with the giant Arasaka mech that takes almost no damage from my pistol. I start using my electrical discharge once again and weirdly get lucky with one of them that does a lot of damage and ends up taking it out. I go meet up with Hanako and we jump into the AV heading to Arasaka Tower. We head into the secret basement where she introduces me to her father. I really didn't think we were that far in this relationship. We interrupt a board meeting, show them her father as well and get ambushed by Yorinobu's crew. Now these dudes have a lot more health and hit a lot harder than anything else I've faced up to this point. And so I end up actually dying here, surprisingly. I reload and play it a lot more cautious and I'm able to take them down. Hanako tells me I need to go find her brother. So just like last time, I activate my invisibility and bolt for the elevator. Since all I need to do is just get to the ending elevator, I decide to just run straight for it once again, avoiding combat entirely. I get up to the top floor, Netrunners bring in some turrets, finish off the rest of the dudes, and we get to the final fight, Adam Smasher. Now, I didn't expect this fight to kind of go this way. I knew it was probably going to be pretty tanky, and I knew I'd probably have to rely on this static discharge thing, but I didn't realize how much I'd have to rely on it. 
I find out really quickly that I'm not going to do near enough damage with how much ammo I have, so I do start using the Static Discharge to once again damage the bosses. It's kind of annoying because I know that I could kill them with just this pistol, but it would just take forever. Um, but because of the 500 bullet limitation, it's impossible to do. This entire fight boils down to me unloading shots into him here or there just for fun and waiting for him to hit me enough and damage me enough to release this static discharge. If he hits me too hard, I have the second heart ability so I can bounce back to life and then I have to wait for cooldowns. Now, the cooldown of this static discharge is two minutes. So basically, I get to let him hit me. Once it goes off, I run around for two minutes and wait for it to cool down. That was this entire fight for over 10 minutes straight. I, in my stupidity, not waiting for a second heart to recharge in my first attempt, ended up actually getting killed. Nope, okay. <laughs> for this final fight, I'm gonna let live me take over. Come on, another hit. Nice. Nice. <sighs> Come on, one more hit, dude. Come on. Nice. Good hit. Well done. Ooh. All right, buddy, I'm almost ready. Come on. I'm ready. Yep. Good. Not enough. Come on, one more hit. Nice. Good hit. Good hit. Okay, here's when things get spicy. Okay, these guys are spongy. These guys are spongy. Good. Very good. Very good. Yes. Very nice spongy people. How bad are these? Yeah, not bad. Okay. This is very doable. Ooh. These guys are also weaker than the other Arasaka guys. This is nice. Oh, chumps. Just simple. <sighs> One sec. I got 20 seconds on my cooldown, okay? All right. All right, here. You ready? Hit me. Wow. Ooh, good damage. That hit him? Didn't hit him. Bummer. Oh, I think this should be the last guys. Give me a sec. Ten more seconds. <laughs> oh, this is painful. Okay, now I'm ready. Go. Wow. Great damage, man. Wow, you are such a good bad guy. You know that? Ooh. 
Ooh, it's ready. It's ready. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Come back here. I need you to hit me. There will be nothing left. Yes, good. Very good, Smasher. Very good. Very good boy. Ooh, okay, we're in the last phase. Good. You no longer have uh, your rocket arm. Come on. Finally. <laughs> Done and gone. Oh, there we go. How about that, oh, you gave me ammo. Thank you. Wow, that was painful. That was really painful. That was a lot of waiting. I got bored. <sighs> Can I shoot him? I want to shoot him. Oh, you have your legs this time. You? That's good. Kind of weird, dude. Kind of weird. Hey, Anders. Only I did it again. Are you proud of me? Hey, Anders, are you, are you proud of me this time? Did I do good? Did I do good, Anders? They took all my money. How dare they? Can I go backwards? I've never tried to go backwards. Whoa, they're letting me go a lot further. Oh, whoa, that. <gasps> they're like teleporting me. No, I want to go backwards. <gasps> All right, well, uh, this is the end of the game. It, it's just cutscenes from here, so I'm done. <laughs> this honestly was the weirdest challenge. There were moments where it felt really easy and other moments where I, I was a struggle. I'm, pause that. Um, I would say a majority of it was just like, it was actually just a battle of attrition more than anything. And if they didn't have that 500 bullet limit on pistols, I don't think I would have had much issues with most of the areas, especially near the end there, because I was so tanky. Um, and I think it would have been completely possible to kill Adam Smasher with just the pistol. Like, you saw me. I was standing in his face shooting him. Like... If I had infinite ammo, or, you know, the equivalence to infinite ammo, that it wouldn't have been hard to finish it. Um, but, so, I might have kind of smudged my rules a little bit with that uh, electro charge thing, but I don't care anymore. <laughs> this this took so long. I can't, ugh. Anyways. If you guys want me to go back and fight him legit and try to get mods or something for infinite ammo... Uh, let me know. That'll probably last like a half hour, but I'm willing to do it. So anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoy this challenge. If you have any other ideas, I, uh, don't really have any other ideas for challenge runs for this game, but I do really like the idea of doing more. So if you have any ideas, fun ones, uh, let me know down in the comments. I'll catch you guys in the next one.